Hi everybody, it's uh, me, Chad, again. Um, I just figured uh, while I'm on the subject of dreams, uh, I'll just go ahead and talk about some dreams I had some years back. Um, I know they were from God. I know they were from our Messiah, Yeshua, and the Holy Spirit because I had a sequence of these dreams. I've had several dreams uh, much like this. Um, stop, 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 Romero. Stop. <laughs> Well, me and my wife's cat. Um, yeah, um, I've had several of these dreams, these end time dreams. Um, and I'll, I'll go ahead and just get right to the meat of it. Uh, I just figured I'd share these because of the dream I had last night that I just posted. Um, in these dreams, um, basically, what happened was this. Uh, the very first one I had was um, very, very intense very very vivid lifelike lucid i mean it was it was incredible the only thing that was strange in it was the uh uh slow motion part <laughs> but other than that it was it's pretty re uh real and lifelike you know i mean it, it it had me freaked out um what happened was this uh a, a long long while ago i lived in another area um i didn't live in dallas at this time when i had this first dream but um i lived in northern texas again um like I do now, but in another part. Uh, and I was asleep one night, and uh, I had this dream, and in this dream, uh, I started off in a very, very strange building. And um, in this building, there was like a mild incline uh, going up toward the uh, front doors. And the front doors had like these little uh, security booth things, that are these metal detector things you walk through, and uh, I walked up the slight incline, and I go out these doors, and, you know, there's some, like, support columns outside, or whatever you call those things, and, um, I look up to the sky, and I see the Dallas City skyline, and, uh, you know, it was a really, really cloudy day out, and from what I could tell, the people that were on the street were wearing, uh, you know, uh, what do you call that? Well, I guess you'd call it cold weather gear. Or they were wearing, like, their winter jackets and, you know, long pants. I mean, just sweaters, things like that. So I could tell it was at a colder time of the year. Um, and, uh, basically, uh, what happened was this. Um, I looked down, and things began to get strange at this part because, uh, it started going slow-mo, like, very slow motion. Uh, I see a pickup truck drive by, like it's pulling up to the curb, and I see a guy look up, and his eyes get wide as saucers, like mine. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he, he looks up in the sky, like, mortified, terrified, horrified of what, what of something. So I look up to the Dallas City skyline, and um, what I see, uh, my back is like to where Bank of America Tower is, you know, the tallest building in Dallas, besides Comerica Bank Tower, which, if you're from Texas, you know probably what I'm talking about here. Um, I'm facing the part where, sort of like where the Shard is, the Shard Tower, and the, uh, that other boxy tower that's shorter than the Bank of America Tower that has, like, the, uh, antenna on top. Well, I'm staring and looking at that, at that part of the skyline, and I see a flash. It was just like, and, and mind you, this, the time that this happened in the day was probably, like, evening time, like, like, early evening, because it's winter time, so you would say it's, like, around the time of, like, 6 p.m., when, um, when you start to see the sun setting and it's getting dark and dim outside, dusk, dusk time frame, right before it gets dark, and the sky is really gray and cloudy and dark, and, um, I look up and I see this flash, and it's, if anyone notice, notices when you watch those nuclear testing videos where nuclear explosions go off, there's a flash and then a big blast afterward that just wipes out everything in the way. Well, I look up and I see it flash. And this is where it gets weird because it's slow-mo. This is right after I saw the guy pull up in slow motion and look up horrified. After that flash, I was like, oh no. I knew in my mind all my thoughts became like really slowed down everything. I was like, wow. Uh, it's, it's over, you know, it's, here it comes, you know, it's over. And I turn around, and naturally, because I'm human, you know, it's an instinct, a reflex to try to escape. Well, I start trying to run, and naturally, it's not going to do me any good, because I'm outside, I'm in the blast. 
I mean, it's going to destroy me, right? Well, I, I try, turn around, try to run, and the last thing I hear in my mind before I wake up is the, literally the blast picks me up and carries me, and I feel my body disintegrate and burn away. I think, forgive me, Yeshua, or Jesus in Aramaic Hebrew, forgive me. You know, I, I, I say that, forgive me. And I shoot up out of bed. I mean, I'm sweating my entire back of my body, from my top of my head to, to my heels, the entire whole back of my body. And there's naturally no reason why this could have occurred, because I'm laying in bed, okay? There's nothing cutting off the circulation to the entire back of my body. But I wake up, pins and needles, the entire back of my body, from the back of my heel to the top of the back of my head, the entire back of my body. The entire thing, legs, arms, all of it, where I was getting picked up and carried and burned by the blast. That is from God. There's no way it wasn't. There's no way that that wasn't from God. How does your back of your body fall asleep in bed? There's no, there, there's literally, it's impossible. There's no possible way that my circulation was cut off in the entire back of my body. Where the blast in my nightmare, <laughs> it was a nightmare from God, but it picked me up and carried me away and burned me up. I look at that as a prophetic sort of a dream. And what makes it even more prophetic is the ones that followed after that. After that, there were some dreams that followed in a sequence, you know, maybe a year here or two years there, it, you know, spaced out um, in, in, in a year, two years. Um, they, they started in like 2011, 2012, at the very end of 2011, and they ended in about 2014. That was when I had the last Dallas getting nuked dream. Well, uh, come to find out I have another dream. Now this one's a bit different and more, you know, it's peculiar because it's different because the first one I'm destroyed, I'm obliterated and it is me in that dream. I'm obliterated in that dream. I'm, I'm destroyed. I'm annihilated in downtown Dallas when a nuke goes off. Now in the next one it was as if I had like a forewarning. Like I knew it was imminent. Like I knew the nuclear strike was imminent. So uh, and it was a nuclear strike because it wasn't done by terrorists or any. It was done by foreign entities, we'll say maybe Russia, maybe China, definitely not North Korea or Iran. I mean, they don't have that capability, uh, as far as I'm aware, to strike that deep into the United States where Dallas is. And even if they did, I doubt that they would go strictly for Dallas with their limited nuclear arsenals. I'm sure it was Russia or China. Well, anyways, um, anyway, back to the, back to the stream. Okay. Um, I get in my, I, I get, I'm in a truck for some reason in the stream, and I'm in Dallas again, but it's like I know, I know that there's a nuclear strike coming. Nobody else knows, everybody else is just ho-hum, going about their business, la-da-da, which is crazy when you think about how complacent people are in this day and age, like people think that something just won't happen, like it's impossible for something to just happen, and, and people don't understand when they say things like, oh, it could never happen here. That's ignorance, pure ignorance. Now, that should be a wake-up call to a lot of people. Things can happen anywhere, because guess what? In the 30s, people were like, oh, Germany is this, the most advanced scientific and, and architectural and educational uh, uh, society in the world. They have all these foreign students going to Germany. And Germany was like a superpower back in the 30s, as they were building up for World War II. They were. They were a global superpower, industrially, economically, and intellectually. They were a superpower. Um, look at all those uh, physicists and theoretical physicists and uh, nuclear uh, physicists that came out of Germany to help us with our bomb program. Um, you know, and I, I, I and I'm not saying that I'm not saying that out of biased, you know, pro-German biased. I mean, I speak German as a second language, but I was an exchange student there, and I saw, you know, those people build up quite a civilization even after World War II. I mean, they rebuilt everything amazing. I mean, it's it's beautiful. It's a beautiful country, and those people are very smart people. Now. Back to this, America, uh, allegedly, well, we're being surpassed by China, but allegedly the hegemon for a while, or a superpower ourselves, you know, we thought that it couldn't happen here. Well, look at all the things that are happening here. Wake up. I mean, it's, it's coming. It's here. It's not just coming. It's here. I shouldn't have even said that. It's already here. And it's going to only get incrementally worse, people. Now, you know, okay, we need to understand that in this, in this next dream, you know, I'm in a truck, I know it's coming, but all these other people are just, you know, ho-hum going about their business, whatever. You know, they have no idea what's coming. I have no time to warn anybody, because literally it's going to happen in a matter of, like, two hours. Literally. And that's what I heard in my, in my spirit, in my dreams. Two hours. You know, so I, I, I get out of there. 
You know, I drive out of Dallas. I head, I head towards southern end of Dallas to get out of town, and I head out that way. Well, literally, I get out, and here it is. It, it was, it was dusk in my dream evening, and then it became dark out. And then, and this time, I see the missiles hit all of DFW, Dallas, boom, you know, Fort Worth, boom, Arlington, boom, uh, Irving, boom, all of it just wiped out. The whole Metroplex, gone, just gone, out of there, you know. And then I, I again, I wake up. I'm, I'm terrified, but this time I survived. Now I wondered. I said. Is God giving me two different paths in my life? Is he giving me two alternative endings? <laughs> like a movie. Like, is God giving me two alternative endings? Do I get to pick my ending? And uh, apparently, I guess I do. Um, because God gives us free will, we can do whatever we want to do with our free will. Now, God wants us to choose right and choose him, of course. You know, and that's a powerful statement. Because you can choose your own reality. And God gave you that ability. Now, if you choose him, your reality is going to be better. Just overall better. Your quality of life will be better. I mean, yeah, you're going to have a lot of hardship if you go that route, but hardship is what God allows us to, to, to make us better people. People don't realize that. I now realize that. I was a stubborn person for a long time, but I finally realized that. Hardship is what makes us better people. You know? Well, you have to go through some hardship. You have to go through the school of hard knocks. I mean... I, I've done a lot of things in my life I'm not proud of doing. I'm done, I've done a lot of things in my life that I shouldn't have done. But you know what? They happen for a reason to make me a better person. I'm a better man today for all the knocks on my head that, that I had. You know, I'm a better man today, and I have a better quality of life today as a result of it. And it's all thanks to God. You know, I, I have nothing to complain about. You know, people don't realize that. When you become a Christian, you, you must understand that these things, the things that you go through and the tr trials and tribulations in your life, it's not its not to hurt you because you know what? You're going to make it through them, especially with God. And then when you do, you'll thank God later when you understand that you have gained new wisdom that you didn't have or wouldn't have otherwise had. So there's that. So anyway, uh, these dreams basically told me, and then there was another one where uh, I was in a... Um, Mark of the Beast chipping factory. <laughs> it was a modular building with, um, it was like an empty warehouse that they put like modular equipment in. Like by, by modular, I mean like, like the upstairs, the downstairs, the escalators. They were all modular pieces that were like installed inside this big warehouse type building. And there were uh, lots of different beds. It looked like the setup that they made for these coronavirus things, but there were people getting the Mark of the Beast vaccine, the chip. They're, they're getting a chip or a vaccine of some sort. And, um, well, I'll just leave it at that. I'll pick that one up later. I'm running out of time on here. Uh, I love you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Be blessed. Bye.